welcome back to Brashonomics. Uh, Kevin Daniels joins us. You know, Kevin, I always love having you. Uh, you've appeared on Cairo 7 TV, Seattle's Better Northwest program. And really, it's always interesting to learn how people should be selling themselves uh, when it comes to a resume, because I think it's probably one of those things that people don't really know how to focus on. And uh, I also get to bask in your glow of being a Ravens fan <laughs> and winning the Super Bowl. That's well, that's true. I, I thought I thought you were going to say that you bask in the glow of my con- my interesting content that I bring. <laughs> I also I bask basis, in that ben. as well, Kevin. But uh, that is correct. The Baltimore <laughs> Ravens are the champions. Yeah, and, uh, that was fun. I bet. I bet you're freaking out during the power outage. Power outage. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. No question. Yeah. Well, a lot of people do not necessarily market themselves to be champions when they are trying to get a job, and that's precisely what people really need to do. Talk a little bit about maybe how people are not focusing on the right thing when it comes to being a champion for themselves in, in the job market. I love that segue. <laughs> um, thanks, but, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So one of the, one of the things that I run into, um, that's it, very, very common in resumes. And I think really particularly the traditional style of a resume, which is the reverse chronology, um, style where you go back, you start with your most recent job and go back and, and you just go job to job in reverse order. A lot of times when you're doing that, you, you may have had different jobs that have been pretty similar and you've done you've done a lot of the same everyday things like the day to day responsibilities of the jobs. And I actually see a lot of people literally copying and pasting the same bullet from one job section to another. And it will appear like three or four different times in the same resume. And that's just not the greatest use of page real estate, as we call it, because you're just, you're, it, especially if it's something that's fairly mundane. Entered phones. Exactly. Let's say that's a that's a terrific example. Let's say you're an administrative assistant, and it was something like, you know, filed records, uh, you know, answered uh, telephone calls and handled correspondence or disseminated, disseminated or... email correspondence for uh, the executive or whatever. And you repeat that bullet three times in the resume because you did that three different places because you were an administrative assistant three different times. Excellent example. So that's just not adding much oomph to your resume. It's not separating you from other candidates vying for for similar jobs um, at all. Uh, So what we want to try to focus on. Exactly. So what we want to try to focus on, and it's it's the similar advice for, for interview when you're going into an interview, it's trying to, and it's totally common sense, but people just don't do it enough in their resumes. It's just trying to find out, okay, what are, first of all, trying to put yourself in the shoes of the reader or the resume. What is this person, you know, working for this company wants to know what's in it for them? Like what's in it for me if I hire you? What am I going to get if I hire you for this this particular position, and when you when you have an accomplishment driven resume, you can adequately convey that pretty quickly. So accomplishments versus tasks, right? Um, and then so there's a number of sort of like ways. You know, I obviously my advice is always to you know use a professional resume writing service. But if you're not going to do that, um, if you want to try to gussy up your own resume, there's it, just in terms of getting it more accomplishment driven. There's a number of things that you can do. To, to get it to that place. Um, and that, that first thing is what I just mentioned. Like the number one thing is trying to, tr- trying to think for yourself, okay, what is going to be of interest to this reader of the resume? How am I going to be able to show them? What are some things I'm going to be able to point out to them that are going to make them interested in at least uh, talking to me further and scheduling an inter- interview with me? Uh, and then where do you mine that information? Where do you find those things? Um, I think like one of the greatest places to find your accomplishments, if you've forgotten what they were, especially let's say you worked somewhere seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, you can't quite remember. A lot of people save their performance evaluations. You know, if you have old performance evaluations on hand, there is no better place. To, and again, it seems like common sense, but I can't tell you how many times I've had to really coax people to send me their performance evaluations. And in those, you find a gold mine. Of because that's what the person who was evaluating you was doing. They were looking for ways to compliment you when they were complimenting you. So they were finding things, measurable things that you did that made an impact. In some ways, that's not reinventing the wheel. No. There's some ways to dig into your past in order to find some of the information that you need. Right, exactly. Like how how did I, you know, when I was evaluated, how did I go above and beyond? What, you know, if it was a sales job, 
uh, it becomes much easier to to you know come up with metrics to to express how you how you did. Um, other types of jobs where there's not regular performance evaluation that has to do with numbers, um, it's it's might be a little more difficult. But there's still a way. You know, you can fi- find those a lot of times in those performance evaluations. Hmm. So. Um, <laughs> another- Unless it's the one that. You got fired from right Ex- before. Exactly. That's yeah. why you're looking for yeah. a new job, of course. The, yeah, you don't want to talk about how you absconded <laughs> funds when you were an accountant, necessarily. <laughs> I rated no. the uh, petty cash flow right. very, very well. I found a way right. to give myself bonuses. I, I'm, res- I'm resourceful. <laughs> yeah. I'm resourceful, yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Uh, so, and and then, it's okay, what types of accomplishments should I, should I include? Include accomplishments to, that convey your business savvy, indicate your understanding of an employer's bottom line, demonstrate a track record for contributing to it. Um, you know, what are the key business motivators such as making money, saving money, saving time, making work easier? Um, that's a huge one if you are, let's say, the example we used before, let's say you're administrative assistant. Rather than just saying, I answer the phones for this guy or, or this gal, or I sent sent emails, how about, uh, was there an example of a time where you analyzed an existing system or process that was being used, you either made a change to it that made it more efficient, or you eliminated that process and started a completely different process, or you automated a system that had previously been manual and you went out and you found a vendor to get an access database set up. You set that access database up. Not only that, you trained the rest of the office on how to use it. Um, those kinds of things are just a lot more meaningful than just using the run of the mill. In some things. ways, it's okay. Here's the, here is the more innovative ways that I led in my old position. Exactly. I mean, at least from what you're saying. Exactly. Right. Um, offer comparisons to help convey that, you know, that you can quote unquote, run faster, jump higher, leap tall buildings in a single bound, so to speak. Um, co- comparisons with competitors, industry averages, company averages, predecessors in the position. Um, so, you know, just ways of, again, any possible way that you can convey in a tangible way or quantifiable way how you might be able to set, set yourself apart from other candidates. Mm-hmm. So. It sounds to me a little bit like a resume is not so much a fill in the blank type of document as it maybe used to be or used to be viewed particularly now particularly now yet you're absolutely right it i don't think it used to matter as much what the content of the resume was and it does now for the simple reason that it's a it's a difficult job market for the job seeker now there are so many more people uh that are vying for or candidates that are vying for the same position. unless you're a developer <laughs> exactly right right well yeah right but <laughs> Good one. Um, but yeah, so in general, that is the case. And so you, there's just every way that you can help yourself set, uh, you know, set yourself apart. And then that other thing, of course, is the keyword thing that I've talked about here a million times. So mm-hmm. if it's a larger company, they're going to be using a keyword search and they'll knock you out before you, they even look at it if you don't have the certain keywords in there. How do I find those keywords? Go on. You can go online. You can find easily find keyword uh, banks for different industries. The job description itself Make sure you've peppered the resume with enough of those, um, some of those descriptors and words in there that are in the actual job uh, listing itself. Mm -hmm. Your resume probably already has a lot of those in it, but just make sure that it does. And and if it doesn't, work it in there either into a skills table or somehow work it in the body of the resume to where it's meaningful and where it's actually representative of what you've done. You know, Kevin, I know you come back, your background as a marketing copywriter, and you've, you've you've been working with resumes. Do people forget to actually sell themselves in their resume and, as you said, just kind of list what they've done? Is there there an element of forgetting that you're actually selling or marketing yourself? There absolutely is an element of forgetting. There's there's no question. It needs to be viewed as a sales – it's a a sales flyer. And and this is something that's easier for somebody who's been in marketing to grasp, who's, who's marketed a product. You are the product now. You're the product being sold in this sales flyer that we call a resume. And so the same principles that would apply if you were creating a flyer to sell a vacuum cleaner, mm-hmm. let's say, you would apply. In other words, you're not going to talk about how its, it's suction isn't as good as the Dyson or mm-hmm. whatever. You know, what I mean, so you're not you're not going to you're going to not going to uh, you know upplay your your uh, your weaknesses. You're going to obviously really really sell the strengths that you offer, um, and do that in a way that's interesting to the reader and meaningful. <laughs> Oh, which, again, is why I think maybe a lot of people who have not been in sales or marketing have a hard time with this. Absolutely. Because if you've never marketed something or you've never sold something, how right. and the hardest thing to do is to sell yourself. 
even people who are in sales and marketing, I have a ton of clients who are sales and marketing people because it's much harder to, people are so uncomfortable doing this because as a society, we're conditioned at this point from, well, from the beginning, we're conditioned that, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of a bragger if you're talking about yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not polite to talk about yourself. That's the message that we get from the beginning. Um, and really, that's kind of what you need to not necessarily brag or be arrogant, but you need to not be shy. There is, I mean, there has got to be an element of things. confidence, at least, right? right? I mean, you absolutely. need to be confident that you are the person for that right. job, and that should come through. One thing, here's one thing that, that I'm going to um, throw out there that's a really great technique for this. It's like, okay, how do I come up with these? I've already described one place where you can find these things. But as far as an exercise on making sure that in each job that you talk about in your resume, that you that you pack it with as much important material as you possibly can, go back to every job you've ever had and tr- see if you can come up with five accomplishments, just any kind of accomplishment in each job. And so let's say you've worked in five different places. That's 25 things, okay, that you can come up with. Take the top two out of each of those list of five. Now you've got 10 solid, really meaningful, impactful accomplishments that you can punch in this resume, that you make the focus of the entire resume these 10 different things. Rather than the companies. Rather, right. And, or rather than the mundane things, like basically I went to work and did this job, is basically <laughs> what, those, what those bullets say. Sure. Right. Kevin, we do have to go to break. Thanks so much for joining us again. That's Kevin Daniels, owner of Northwest Resumes. I don't know how people could not work with, you know, it's both probably the most valuable document you're going to create for yourself if you're trying to get a job that document you're trying to essentially earn 50 80 hundred thousand dollars a year with uh, trying to do it on your own that does not sound like something you should focus on especially with facebook running around giving you all your i don't know you're unable to focus on yourself <laughs> hey we gotta go to break i need to go to try break. to tie it back yeah, you try to tie it back i this tried thing, and you know we'll be back after these breaks you're listening to rationomics <laughs>